Hello everyone, it's time to begin the seven spiritual laws of yoga. I'm S Susan Chapman. Hold on just for a second. I need to be behind my microphone or you can't hear me. So welcome everyone. I'm Susan Chapman and this is the seven spiritual laws of yoga. And I'm just so happy to see all of you here. Um, as probably you've known, if you've seen, you know, if there's any bio that you've looked at or anything before you've come, I'm a proud graduate of a lot of programs from LMU, including the MA program, um, the PGYT program. I was in the inaugural class of that, YTRX with um, Larry Payne. And I'm a, I'm a yoga therapist with IAYT. And I'm also a proud member of the Chopra um, teacher training faculty. So I'm a Vedic educator with the Chopra Center. And so that means that I am certified in meditation, Ayurveda, and also the seven spiritual laws of yoga. So I'm so glad you're joining for our class today. This is a really wonderful experience, a wonderful opportunity for you to experience um, the seven spiritual laws of yoga. Um, a couple of housekeeping things. If you have props and you want to use them, I have some props that I might use. We're going to at some point go into a shoulder stand and some people might prefer to do a supported shoulder stand. That's the way I'm going to teach it. So you might wanna have a block for that. Um, we're gonna squat. And so some people can't squat comfortably, which is fine. That's just our, everybody's body is different. So you may want to have a block to sit on when you go into a squat or to hold as a counterbalance if you fall over. So I just wanna give you some of the a heads up there. I also have a blanket. You might want a blanket if you get on your knees for any reason, you might need a blanket. And then also I have a strap. So all of those things you may have in your own home. So if you need them, you know, please feel free to take advantage. I also have my mats laid out in a little interesting kind of way. I did sort of a crisscross because I'm going to turn around while I teach you so you can see me from different sides. But when you're doing your practice, you wouldn't be turning around like that unless you really wanted to. So I just wanted to share that with you as well. Um, other housekeeping things in terms of good health. For those of you who may have things like diabetes, glaucoma, um, osteoporosis, if you are having, or if you have a bad lower back, for example, or a bad back in general, and it doesn't feel good or it's not advised for you to hold forward folds for very long, just keep that in mind. You know, if you're going to fold, um, go into forward folds at all, just keep it as brief as maybe tying your shoes. And for someone who might have something going on with their backs where they don't feel that great going into extension, just keep that in mind. Every You don't have to extend. Anything that I'm sharing with you always comes with options. And so you don't have to necessarily uh, do the pose exactly the way I do it. But we're gonna have a lot of fun because first we're going to do some poses where we're just sort of getting into our bodies, getting into our breath, but then we're going to do some moon salutations that will involve lion's breath. We're going to do some sun salutations that we will chant through. And because you're either in your home or somewhere else, um, you can sing as loud, sing like listening and really uh, get into the chanting. Sometimes, you know, when we're in a group, we might feel a little intimidated, but this is a great way to really engage in the chanting process. And I will teach you those chants as we go. You don't have to memorize anything. Um, so the class itself, I want to share with you where it comes from. So it comes from the seven spiritual laws of yoga, which is a book that followed Deepak Chopra's seven spiritual laws of success. So this book was written by Deepak Chopra and David Simon, who co-founded the Chopra Center, which was in Carlsbad, California, and they founded it in the early nineties together. And so this book, if you've ever read the seven spiritual laws of success, which I believe is like 25 years old now. If you've ever read that book, there are laws of the day and things that you do in line with those laws of the day. And then this is a yoga practice that's been built around those laws of the day. So I'll give you a quick list of what those laws of the day are. So on Sunday, it's pure potentiality. On Monday, it's the law of giving and receiving. On Tuesday, it's the law of karma. On Wednesday, it's the law of least effort. Thursday is intention and desire. Friday is detachment. And then today, Saturday, is the law of Dharma. 
And so there's a mantra that goes along with the law of Dharma. And I thought we would start off with that. So make yourselves comfortable in a seated position. We are gonna start off actually on our backs to do our asana practice, but for now, we're just gonna be in a seated position. And close your eyes. And the mantra that is associated with the law of Dharma is Om Varunam Nama. And I'll repeat it several times. And I'm just asking you to internalize this mantra as we begin. Om Varunam Nama. And I'll say it one more time. Om Varunam Nama. And what that translates to is my life is aligned with cosmic law. And so when we think about our dharmas, we think about this idea of witnessing awareness, looking at our lives with some space between our, the witness and the actual activity of our lives. We also want to take stock of our talents, our special gifts. And we just heard Aaron provide his special gifts so beautifully. Um, it was just a beautiful performance. And one might would say, and, and that Aaron was sharing with us his dharma. And then also the third point about dharma, the law of dharma, is service to others. So the questions we can ask ourselves is what is my life's purpose in line with cosmic law? Witnessing ourselves taking a step back from the activity of our lives, using our special talents, particularly in service to others. So repeating that mantra silently to yourself, Om Varunam Nama. And if you have your eyes closed, or if you're gazing at a drishti at a gazing point, I ask you to make your way onto your back. And I want to model for you how to do that safely because it's very important to do that safely. So you're on, you're seated on your sits bones, if you will. And so then bring your knees over to the side, bring your hands in front of you, and then just kind of extend down onto your back so that you're not just flopping down onto your back. And then from here, experiment with what feels good on your body. How are you feeling right now? Do you want to have your knees bent? Do you want to have them straight? Do you want one knee bent, one knee straight? Or maybe you want to heel toe your feet out to the side of the mat and bring your knees together. So you decide what feels good right now. Just close your eyes. And we're going to begin with belly breathing. So bring one hand to the chest and one hand to the belly or both hands to the belly. And on the inhale, feel the belly rise. And on the exhale, experience the belly fall. Inhale as the belly rises. Exhale as the belly falls. And continue in this way for just a few more breaths. You want to get in touch with the breath in your body because that will be the breath that you're going to carry through your yoga practice. So inhale and exhale. And if you know ujjayi breathing and you're comfortable with ujjayi breathing, you can begin to introduce ujjayi breathing now. Inhale, feel the belly rise. Exhale, allow the belly to fall. So if you are lying down like I am with your knees together, gently separate your knees and heel toe your feet in so that they're in, in more of an alignment with your hips. 
Now we're going to bring the right knee into the chest. You can do what you prefer with the left side. You can either have the knee bent or you can have it straight. It really is up to you. So on your next inhale, bring the right knee in toward the chest and you can clasp at the shin or at the thigh, whatever feels right to your body. And just gently rock the hip back and forth in the hip socket. Rocking the hip back and forth. We wanna bring some lubrication into the hip socket. On a day like today, yoga day, we may have been doing a lot of classes, but on a traditional, typical, not traditional, but a typical day, we're probably sitting a lot, especially now if we're in Zoom meetings and things like that. So it's really important to lubricate, lubricate the hips. So this is something you could do every day. And just rock the hip back and forth in the hip socket. And then come to stillness and take the knee into the right hand and allow the knee to fall open to the right. And I use my elbow as a kickstand. You could use a, a block up high, but you could also use your elbow as a kickstand and just breathe. Maybe relax the foot. Just allow the hip to fall open. The hand can be on the belly. It can be alongside you. And on your next breath, bring the knee in toward the chest again. Clasp it behind the thigh. Extend the foot toward the ceiling and then bend. And extend and then bend. And extend and then bend. On your next extension, keep the foot up toward the ceiling and begin to rotate the ankle. You can go in any direction that you want. And after a few times around, switch to the opposite direction. We're just warming up the joints and warming up the hamstrings. Point and flex, just a little. You'll feel that in the back of the leg. Now come to a more neutral um, position with the hips and have the foot toward the ceiling. Then bring the toe gently toward the nose and then a little toward the left, not a big movement, toward the nose and a little toward the left shoulder. You're gonna really feel that in the hamstring. And just breathe. Think of the breath that you created while you were on your back, just doing belly breathing and try to maintain that. And then come back to neutral. Bring the toe toward the nose, but this time bring it ever so slightly toward the right shoulder. So you're gonna come in this direction. Try to keep the knee straight, but don't hyperextend the knee. And those of you who hyperextend your knee, you probably already know that you do that. And I, I certainly know that I do. So I try to keep a slight bend without hyperextending, but here I'm trying to straighten my knee as much as possible. You might feel a little shake in the leg. I'm feeling a little shake in the leg. And just breathe. And then come back to neutral. Take the left leg and extend it long. Bring the right knee in toward the chest. We're gonna roll over for a, a knee down twist. But before we do that, if you feel like your shoulder is going to come off the ground when you extend your um, right arm out, you may wanna put a block under your right knee because you don't wanna go any farther then what will keep your shoulder on the ground? So we're gonna roll over to the left and see my shoulder is beginning to lift up. So I'm going to come off, I'm gonna back off that twist just a little bit. And you can look toward the right hand if you want to. And just breathe. And just one more breath. Gaze at the thumb if you can. And then come back up to neutral. Give the knee one last squeeze. Extend both legs long and see if you can feel the length that you've created on the right side of the body. Maybe extend the arms over the head. Give a really good stretch in both directions. Inhale and exhale. Now, if you had your left leg bent, you may want to have your right leg bent for this. I'm gonna turn around so that you can see me from this side. So I'm gonna have my right leg bent because I had my left leg bent. I'm gonna bring my left knee in toward my chest and you can do the same thing.
And then begin to rock it back and forth in the hip socket in the same way that you did. It's so important to lubricate the joints. You know, there are several different phases of life according to Ayurveda. In our younger years, we're in the kapha stage where we're building structure. And in the middle years, we're in the pitta stage where we're driven by fire, by this a strong motivation to accomplish things. And then as we get older, we move into the vata stage of life, which is a drying out time. So it's really important to keep our joints lubricated. So come back to stillness and then clasp either, clasp behind the thigh. Oh, I'm sorry, we have to open up to the left. So we're going to open up to the left and use the elbow as a kickstand. And just feel the openness, openness in the hip if you can. Find a gazing point, maybe close your eyes. Come back up to your knee towards your chest, clasp behind the thigh, and then take the leg up toward the ceiling or the sky, and then bend, and then up, and then bend, and then up, and bend. The next time you extend the leg, just keep it long, and let's give the ankles a little attention. So rotate the ankle in one direction, Remember the breath pattern that you established at the beginning, the belly breathing, just keep that in mind as we're working through our practice. And then go in the opposite direction. Maybe point and flex. And then come to stillness. And we're going to do the same thing with a knee down twist. So extend the right leg long, bring the knee in toward the chest, extend the left arm out. And just remember that as soon as the shoulder starts to lift off the ground, that's where you'll stop your twist. And then roll over to the right and maybe look toward the left if that feels good on your neck. Always remember that yoga, the practice of yogasana should bring us joy. Um, there's a talk I listened to about Samkhya by a teacher in India named Ganesh Rao. And he talked about how it's human nature to be tamasic, to be more lazy. And so we won't do things that don't give us joy if we're not motivated to do them. So find joy in your practice so that you're motivated to do it every day. And then come back up, bring the knee in toward the chest, bring the opposite knee in toward the chest like a little ball and then roll to one side and gently press yourself up. We're going to go into a little cat cow so that we can start moving the spine. So before we go into that, I just want to share with you that it is important to move the spine in six directions every day. And so this practice is designed to help us do that. We want to flex and extend. We want to go side to side and we want to twist every day. And that will keep our, our spines healthy and flexible. So come onto hands and knees. Knees hip distance apart. Toes can be curled under. I prefer them not to be, but everybody's body is different. And then the hands are under the shoulders. Inhale, drop the belly, lift the tail. Maybe look up, maybe stay neutral. It just depends what, what's good on your body. Exhale, chin toward chest, belly toward spine. Press the floor away. Inhale, drop the belly, lift the tail. Maybe look up, maybe stay neutral. Exhale, chin toward chest. We'll do one more just like that. Inhale. And exhale. Now when you're ready, come to neutral. And we'll do a little bit of a balancing posture. So we're going to extend the left leg out, extend the right hand out, and that can be your balance. And then let's just do it on the opposite side, side excuse me, left hand out, right foot out. That can be your balance. 
come back to neutral. Left foot out, right foot out. If you want a little something extra, lift and lift. The hand, bring the um, palm of the hand toward the midline. It's easier on the shoulder. Don't let the left back foot go higher than the hip. Point the toes down and breathe. And then release. And let's go to the opposite side. Hand out, foot out. If that's where you want to stay, that's fine. Or lift and lift. And just breathe. Bring the hand down, bring the foot down. We're going to try it and we're going to try it again, except this time you can either stay here, here, or we're going to reach back and grab the foot. So extend the left foot out, extend the right hand out, lift and lift. And if it's available to you, reach back and grab the foot. But stay looking toward the mat if you can. And then release. Maybe shake it out a little bit. <laughs> extend the right foot, extend the left hand. Now every side, each side of our body is different. So it may be that this side, you may not feel like you want to go to the fullest extent. So you just do what feels right on your body. Extend, lift, lift, and if it feels good, reach back and grab the foot. And breathe. And then release. Bring the big toes together, the knees apart, come back into child's pose. Now your child's pose could be here, or it can also be here, or your hands can be under your head, here. And from child's pose, we're gonna come up to standing. So come up to your, heels, and then bend the knees. Feet can be hip distance apart and rise up toward the sky. And then bring your hands in toward your heart and just breathe. So we're going to do two forms of salutation. So the first salutation that we're going to do is a moon salutation. And so think about the moon as a cooling energy, as a feminine energy. And then from there, we're going to go into sun salutations with chants. But the moon salutation will involve a lion's breath. So don't be shy about the lion's breath. And it will come with our victory squat. You'll stick your tongue out. You'll exhale um, loudly and just very comfortably. So here we go. So first, we bring our hands up to sky. And we have our fingers in a temple pose. So hands to sky. And then exhale over to the right. And then come up half moon. Exhale over to the left. And then come up. And now we're going to step out for a victory squat with lion's breath. So step out to the right, bring the L arms in, bend the knees. And then on the exhale, you're going to do a strong lion's breath. And now we're in five pointed star. So we're going to go over to the right and half triangle, come back to five pointed star, go over to the left, come back to five pointed star, victory squat, <sighs> bring the foot in, come up to temple pose, maybe take the awkward grip, go right, go left, come back up. This time we're gonna step out to the left, and victory squat, lion's breath. <sighs> Come up to five point and star. Go to the left, half triangle, five point and star. Go to the right, half, tri uh, half triangle, five point and star. Victory squat, lion's breath. <sighs> Come back up to temple pose. This time go left, 
Come up and go right. Come up. Hands to heart. Hands by your side. And just stand in Tadasana just for a moment. Maybe close your eyes. Feel the earth under both feet. Equal standing pose. So we're going to do the moon salutation one more time. So bring the hands up. Maybe if you haven't taken the awkward grip yet, this is a good time to start. Temple pose. Over to the right, half moon. Temple pose. Over to the left. Temple pose. Knees should be soft. Feet are about hip distance apart. Step out into victory squat. Step out. Hands toward the body. Lion's breath. Half triangle. Five-pointed star. Half triangle. Five-pointed star. Lion's breath. Back to temple pose. Over to the right, half moon. Temple pose. Over to the left. Temple pose. Step out, victory squat on the left. Five-pointed star. Half triangle. Five-pointed star. Half triangle. Five-pointed star. Victory squat, lion's breath. Come back to temple pose. Left. Come up. And right. Come up. Hands to heart center. And hands by your side. So we're going to go into the sun salutations with chanting, but I want to make sure that, well, I can't, my microphone is in front of me, so I'll talk to you here and then I'll approach my computer. So I want to make sure that you can see the handouts. If you can't see the handouts, um, if you don't have them or they can't be shared, I actually have a PowerPoint with the the mantras on them, but I just need to show, they're on a couple of slides. So I would just go through the slides and then I will um, stop sharing the screen and then we'll do them together. Just know we're going to do it in call and response. So you don't have to worry that you don't remember. And I've been teaching, like I said, these for this, at least for a decade. And sometimes I forget. And if you forget, it's okay. We'll have a lot of fun. So hang on just for a second. I'll walk toward the computer. So the direct link to my handouts is in the chat if anybody wants to see them. I'm also going to share the screen right now just so you can see. Okay. Oops. So this is our class, The Seven Spiritual Laws of Yoga. So here are the first six sun salutations. So we're going to do sun salutation three also known sometimes as sun salutation C. I'm gonna do the sun salutation for you before we do the mantras, just so that you know what we're doing. Um, and each mantra is exactly the same. It's Om, there's a Bija in the middle, and then Namaha at the end. So only the Bija will change, only the middle sound will change. And in the handouts is an, uh, an explanation of what each sound means, just so that you know. But in, it's all different ways of worshiping the sun or saluting the sun. So it hands to heart, it's Mitraya, hands to sky, Ravaye, hands to foot, Suryaya. We're gonna do equestrian pose, which is um, a variation on crescent. And so you can do that either with your knee down, your knee up, your hands down, your hands up, that's up to you. And down dog, it's Kagaya. And then in the eight limbs pose, which is also, it's a variation on Chaturanga, if someone doesn't know what that is, I'm gonna demonstrate the whole thing. Um, you can either do chaturanga or eight limbs pose, whatever feels good on your body, or just come all the way down to the floor. And then we'll do cobra pose. It's Haranya Garbaya. Downward facing dog again is Marichaya. Equestrian is a DTA. Hands to foot pose is Savitre. Hands to sky is Arkaya. And then hands to heart is Bhaskarya. So I don't expect you to memorize those. I will um, teach them to you, so no worries. So I'm gonna go back to my mat. I've got my microphone and we will begin. So let me just go through one of the sun salutations for you. And as I said, I'm gonna turn myself around, but you would just do it on your mat, not turning yourself around. So I'm just gonna do this, the sun salutation with no mantra. So inhale, hands to sky. Well, first, so I'm sorry. 
hands to heart. Inhale, hands to sky. Exhale, hands to foot. Then the right foot would stay forward, left leg would come back, and you could be in any version of equestrian that feels good. It can be here, it can be here, 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 whatever feels good on your body. Then you would go into downward facing dog. Then eight limbs, you drop the knees, you bring the elbows in, chin and chest to the floor, wriggle down like a worm, come up into cobra. And it can be low, doesn't have to be very high. Then back into downward facing dog. And back into an equestrian pose that works for your body. Left foot comes forward, maybe the knee is down, maybe the hands are down, maybe the hands are here. Then the hand to foot pose. Feet can be hip distance apart, whatever feels comfortable. Hands to sky hands to heart. So it's pretty simple. So we're going to start with the mantras and I will call them out. So we'll do a call and response. I'll call them out. I'll call the pose out and then we'll say them all together. And then maybe just for the very last one, I will have you just, I'll call the poses out and you'll just do the mantras by yourselves, but I'll do them too, but I just won't call them up mantra out. So here we go. Make yourself comfortable for stand in Tadasana. Think about where you want your feet placed. I'm right or hip distance apart. My knees are a little soft. Imagine opening the chest. Maybe the hands come forward, belly to spine. And just breathe. Imagine a string pulling your head toward the sky. Even if your spine can't straighten all the way, just give that intention to the body. And here we go, hands to heart. Mitraya. Om Mitraya Namaha. Hands to sky. Rabaye. Om Rabaye Namaha. Hands to foot. Suryaya. Om Suryaya Namaha. Left foot back. Banave. Om Banave Namaha. And then we're going to go into downward facing dog. Kagaya. Om Kagaya Namaha. Eight limbs, push ne. Om push ne Namaha. Cobra pose, Haranya Garbaya. Om Haranya Garbaya Namaha. Downward facing dog, Marichiya. Om Marichiya Namaha. Now the left foot's going to come forward, and it's a DTA. Om Aditya Namaha. We're going to come to hands to foot, Savitre. Om Savitre Namaha. Hands to sky, Arkaya. Om Arkaya Namaha. Hands to heart, Bashkaraya. Om Bashkaraya Namaha. And just rest for a moment. Maybe doing your ujjayi breathing. Maybe your belly, just paying attention to your belly breathing. Come into Tadasana. Maybe look at a drishti, maybe close your eyes. And here we go. I'll call it out again. Hands to heart, Mitraya. Om Mitraya Namaha. Hands to sky, Rabaye. Om Rabaye Namaha. Hands to foot, Suryaya. Om Suryaya Namaha. This time the right foot is going to come back, Banave. Om Banave Namaha. Downward facing dog, Kagaya. Om Kagaya Namaha. Down to your knees, eight limbs, Kushne. Om Kushne Namaha. Come up in Cobra, Haranya Garbaya. Om Haranya Garbaya Namaha. Back into Downward Facing Dog, Marichiya. Om Marichiya Namaha. The uh, right foot is going to come forward, it's a DTA. Om DTA Namaha. Hands to foot, Savitre. Om Savitre Namaha. Hands to Sky, Arkaya. Om Arkaya Namaha. 
Hands to heart, Bhaskarya. Om Bhaskarya Namaha. And just breathe. We're going to do this two more times. One time I'll still do the call and response and the second time we're just going to do the mantras as we do it. So here we go again, feet hip distance apart, comfortable, tall, imagine a string pulling your head toward the ceiling, hands to heart, Mitraya. Om Mitraya Namaha, really sing it out loud. Hands to sky, Ravaye. Om Ravaye Namaha, hands to foot, Suryaya. Om Suryaya Namaha. Left leg back, Banave. Om Banave Namaha. Come to downward facing dog, Kagaya. Om Kagaya Namaha. Eight limbs, Pushne. Om Pushne Namaha. Cobra pose, Paranyagarbaya. Om Paranyagarbaya Namaha. Downward facing dog, Marichiya. Om Marichiya Namaha. Left leg forward, um, Aditya. Om Aditya Namaha. Hands to foot, Savitre. Om Savitre Namaha. Hands to sky, Arkaya. Om Arkaya Namaha. Hands to heart, Bhaskarya. Om Bhaskarya Namaha. Take a minute, or a moment, I should say, to breathe, not a minute. Maybe stand in Tadasana. So this time I will call out the pose, but not the mantra. So it's our opportunity to really internalize the mantra and make it our own. So here we go, hands to heart. Om Mitraya Namaha, hands to sky. Om Ravaye Namaha, hands to foot. Om Suryaya Namaha, right leg back. Om Banave Namaha, downward facing dog. Om Kagaya Namaha, eight limbs or Chaturanga. Om Pushne Namaha, Cobra Pose. Om Paranyagarbaha Namaha, downward facing dog. Marichiya, oops, sorry, <laughs> gave you a good one. Om Marichiya Namaha. And just breathe for a minute. We're going to come forward with the right foot. Aditya. Om Aditya Namaha. Come to hands to foot. Savitre. Om Savitre Namaha. Hands to sky. Arkaya. Om Arkaya Namaha. Hands to heart. Bhaskarya. Om Bhaskarya Namaha. Now stay for a moment with your hands to your heart. Close your eyes. And let's end just the sun salutations, not our class, just the sun salutations by chanting on together. going to get make our way down to the floor but the healthy we one of the healthy things we need to do every day is to squat so this is where your block comes in if you need to squat onto a block and I'll show you what to do so if you're going to go into a squat and you can't get all the way down you can just set a block underneath your body like that if you're going to fall over you can hold a block like this and that will help you so we're going to make our way down into a squat that is safe and comfortable for you I'm gonna turn sideways. My feet are about, as wide as my mat, my toes are pointed out, or turned out, I should say. And then just as straight of a spine as you can, it's not possible for everyone. Just come down into a squat. Maybe put your elbows on inside your inner thighs, pressing your knees a little bit away from each other. Maybe bring your hands to prayer and just breathe.
One more breath in this position. Then place your hands behind your back. Allow your backside to touch the earth. Extend both legs out in front of you. We're gonna do a Dandasana to Paschimottanasana. So place both hands on either side of the hips. Now, not everybody's arms touch the ground. Their hands don't touch the ground, comfort, the ground comfortably because sometimes the arm to torso ratio is not exactly perfect for someone to do that. So you can also put blocks under your hands or you could have a blanket maybe under your hips and your hands can be on the blanket. Bring your toes back towards your nose. Imagine a string pulling your head toward the sky. Even if you can't straighten your back, just imagine it. Bring your shoulders up, back, and down. And then place your hands with your fingertips facing your toes beside your hips. And just breathe. Dandasana, staff pose. Then on your next inhale, bring your hands toward the sky, reach out over the legs. There is no award for reaching your toes. So if you want to try to come down with a straight back, this may be it. And that's fine. So, or you can come down a little bit more, whatever feels good on your body. You can reach the toes if that feels good. And just breathe, find a gazing point. And then with the last breath for this pose, allow yourself to collapse over the legs. Just round and breathe. Continue to pull the toes back toward the nose just energetically if it's not possible for you to do that. And then gently roll yourself up. So we're gonna go into bridge pose and I'd like you to get down onto your back in the same way that I showed you how to do it at the beginning. So you can bend both legs, put your hands beside you, scoot your backside down a little bit, maybe roll over onto your arm and come onto your back. So we're going to do something called, that, the, that Chopra calls mountain raises from the sea, which is just a moving bridge pose. And then after that, you can hold the bridge. If you're not comfortable holding a bridge, you have your trusty block to put under your sacrum, I would recommend either this height, I always say apartment, condo, house. So you pick whichever way you want to be on with your block. I would not recommend the apartment height. It's just not comfortable for you. So you put it across your sacrum this way or this way when we do come to hold the bridge pose. So place your hands beside your body, keep your feet about hip distance apart, feet flat on the earth. Sometimes people say to be able to touch your heels. If you can, great. Don't worry too much about that. Pressing the length of the arms, the palms, all the way through the fingertips. Channel your inner starfish and make starfish hands. And then on the inhale, rise up. A little John and Darabunda chin lock at the top. And then exhale, come down. Let's do it two more times just like that. Inhale, come up. And then exhale, come down. One more time just like that. Inhale, come up. Exhale, come down. And this one we're going to keep up. Now you can either have your block or you can use your hands. I'll guide you through your hands. Inhale, come up. You can have your block. So for example, I, I'm on a block, this is supported. Or clasp your hands underneath your backside, roll your shoulders and your arms underneath the body, press the floor away, press your hips up toward the sky. And then just breathe. Two more breaths, just like this. Then unclasp the hands, roll down one vertebra at a time. So I can't see you. So I mean, I can see some of you, but not all of you. But I don't know your capability with shoulder stand. So if you are comfortable doing full shoulder stand, we're going to go into shoulder stand now. If you're not comfortable, I will show you how to do a supported shoulder stand and that's where I'm going to stay. 
so that people who are not comfortable in shoulder stand can go into shoulder stand. So take your block. So if, you're, if you can do shoulder stand without assistance, go into shoulder stand now. For those who need to do assisted, uh, a shoulder stand with um, a block for support, I'm gonna show you that now. So stay with your feet like you're doing bridge pose. Come up in a bridge. You can either have your block here or here. I'm gonna put mine in the mid height, the condo height. Then I'm gonna take one foot up toward the ceiling and then another. Try not to turn your head. Find a gazing point in your ceiling. Two more breaths. Think of the breath that we established at the beginning, that belly breathing, maybe you're doing ujjayi. One more breath. Release one foot down and then the other. Lift your hips up, take the block out. And then um, from here, you can either do fish pose if that's comfortable for you or bridge just to do a counter to that pose. But just remember that it's a little bit different part of the spine, but let's just extend the feet out, tuck the hands under, roll the shoulders and arms underneath the body, and then just lift the head up and maybe tap the back of the head onto the earth. And just breathe. And then release the pose, release the arms. We're going to go into Shavasana, but first bring the knees in toward the chest and rock side to side. We're gonna go into Shavasana now for a short time and then I'm going, we're going to end with chakra toning. So we want to do our Shavasana before that. I am going to put my computer on mute so that you can have a quiet Shavasana for the time you're in Shavasana. So extend one leg long and then the other. Put one arm up, hand up, and then the other. Allow the feet to flop open, maybe roll one shoulder blade under and then the other. Close your eyes. Shavasana.
And slowly begin to deepen the breath. Inviting some movement back into the fingers, back into the toes. As you're lying supine as you are, check and see which nostril feels more open to you. And then roll to the side of the open nostril. And if that's not something that you wanna do, just roll to the right side. If you can't tell or you just wanna to roll to the right side, just do what feels good on your body. But roll over and rest on your arm as a pillow. So you're still in that resting place. And then when you feel ready, gently press yourself up into a comfortable seated position. I'm in a very, I'm in Sukhasana. Um, somebody might be more comfortable in Padmasana. Somebody might need to have their legs extended or be in diamond pose. You do what feels good on your body. And we're going to go through a chakra toning. So most of you, a lot of you have probably practiced yoga in the past and you know that the body is the subtle body is full of nadis and chakras and um, there are lots of uh, places of energy where energy needs to flow in the body. And the chakras that are along the spine are the ones that we tend to talk about and focus on. And there are seven chakras that run along the spine from the root to the crown. There's the muladhara, which is the root chakra, the Svadhisthana, which is the creative sacral chakra, which is beneath the navel. And they're, they radiate in all directions. It's not just like there's a front part or a back part. The chakras are like jewels. They radiate in all directions. There's the Manipura, which is at the solar plexus, the Anahata at the heart, the Vishuddha at the throat, the Ajna at the third eye, and the Sahaswara at the crown of the head. So we're going to invite the energy of our bodies to flow freely through each chakra. Sometimes we might have a blockage, right? We might not be able to get things done, which is sort of the domain of the Manipura chakra. So if we can't get something done, we want to sort of free whatever blockage might be happening in that energy center. And we may be aware of a blockage or we may not be aware of a blockage. And that's what's so great about chakra toning. We're going to tone the chakras from the root to the crown using mantras. So I will guide us through this. So you don't have to worry about um, the mantras or having your eyes open or anything like that. I'm going to guide us all the way through it. So close your eyes and sit comfortably. You may need to sit up against a wall, whatever is going to give you comfort and ease. And bring your attention to the base of the spine, the root chakra, the muladhara chakra. Imagine a swirling color red, like a a ruby, a rich color, red, swirling, glowing. And the sound that we will repeat together is LAM. to the point just below the navel, the sacral chakra, the site of creativity. Imagine a swirling color orange. This is the Svadhisthana chakra and its corresponding color, which is orange. Imagine that swirling and glowing and beaming out in all directions. And the mantra for this chakra is Vam. Vaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaa
It's in the solar plexus region. It is also corresponding to the sun, the beautiful bright swirling yellow of the sun. So bring your attention here and imagine the sun's beams going out in all directions from this region of the body. And the sound is Ram. Ram. And bring your attention to the center of the chest the Anahata chakra, the heart region. It's not off to the left or right as it is, you know, anatomically in our bodies, but it's considered more the center of the chest. And it's a beautiful color green and it's coming out into the sides and out the back in all directions, a swirling emerald green. And the sound is yum. attention to the base of the throat, the Vishuddha chakra. This is where we find our voice. Sometimes if we're unable to express emotion, we might say that we have a lump in our throats. We might have this feeling of stuckness of not being able to speak our truth. The color for this chakra is blue. And imagine this blue radiating from the throat from here and around the sides and out the back and all directions around the body. And the sound is hum. hum. And bring your attention to the point between the eyebrows, the Ajna chakra, the third eye. It's our site of intuition. Imagine a beautiful color indigo beaming out of the third eye, beaming in all directions around that place of the body, around the subtle body. And the sound for this chakra is sham. attention to the crown of the head, the thousand petal lotus, often pictured as violet or ultraviolet light. Imagine this ultraviolet light connecting the body to consciousness, the subtle body to consciousness in all directions. This is the Saraswara chakra and the sound is Om. Om. Just sit for a moment, feeling the energy going up and down the spine. Our chakras are clear and vibrant, beautiful, generating color and light in every direction, clarity, understanding, love, compassion, creativity, feeling grounded and supported, being able to get things done. The energy is moving freely through all of these chakras, supporting us as we live to the fullest extent of our dharmas, be, truly being aligned with cosmic law. So I want to thank all of you for joining me today. I hope that you've had a good practice. I really feel very grateful to have had you here. It really makes me very happy to have this opportunity to participate with you and serve with you. So if you would bring your hands to your heart center. And maybe bow your head and just we'll close with a final om. Om. Namaste. Thank you, everyone.
Thank you, Susan. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. You too. Thank you. And for anybody sticking around for the next presentation, we'll be back at 2.15 with a meditation with Mukta Gukau called Heartfulness Meditation.